this question deals with PAH. So before we read the question, let's understand PAH first. You can read more about PAH by going to page 506 from first day 2012. Okay, so imagine that this is the glomerulus and the blood vessel is passing like so. And inside the blood vessel, we have uh, plasma. Now what happens with PAH is some of it is filtered. So this is being filtered, which becomes part of the urine. None of the filtered PAH goes back to, is not reabsorbed in the kidney, right? All of it goes in the urine. And the rest of the PAH, as it travels down the blood vessel, it's going to come and join all of it inside the nephron. See, none of it is going back. Uh, there is 0% pH right here. So all of the pH, if it enters the kidney, pH is excreted out. Filtered and secreted. By filtration and by secretion, because this process is filtration, this process is secretion. But the point is, at the end of the day, none of it is going back to the blood. Now, there is only one way the blood uh, the plasma or the pH that's present in the plasma might end up in the blood vessel again. There is only one way. Now that way is, the thing is, filtration is not carrier mediated. You don't need a little carrier here to carry out filtration. So filtration, no matter how much pH is you're going to have, whatever it's going to be filtered, it's going to be filtered, okay? The, the, this is not carrier mediated, but secretion is. Secretion is carrier mediated. So if you have so much PAH in your system that this carrier becomes, um, you know, kind of overwhelmed by the amount of PAH, it's just there is not enough manpower to get the PAH out of the out of the system through secretion. Through secretion, only then you will have. PAH back in your blood. A little bit pH is going to go back to your blood. Other than that, if the carriers are not saturated, then you're going to get rid of your uh, get get rid of your PAH because this process filtration not carrier mediated, secretion carrier mediated. So if you have so much pH in your system, you might see some of the pH back in the blood because your your carrier is just saturated but none of it is reabsorbed back. None of it is going back here at any point. Just wanted to kind of throw it out there. Okay, so now that we understand pH, let's talk about plasma flow because pH is used to measure effective renal plasma flow. Now, what's interesting about kidney or kidney physi physiology is that anytime they measure any flow in the kidney, there is the one equation that they use and they just switch it up here and there to make some changes. So let's say I'm just going to say flow and this is the equation. Flow is equal to concentration times x, not concentration times, a concentration of x times urine flow divided by urine concentration of x. So when we're measuring effective renal plasma flow, we're just going to replace this x with pH. If we are going to measure a GF, uh, glomerular filtration rate, we are going to replace that X with creatinine. Okay, you get the idea. So, we are going to write that effective renal plasma, this should be E, effective renal plasma flow is equal to concentration of PAH times urine flow divided by urine concentration of PAH, as simple as that, that that's how we're going to measure effective renal plasma flow. Anyways, so now that we understand what PAH is, I think we're ready to attempt the question because without understanding all that, it would have been a waste of time. So the question says that it is estimated that PAH and then the extraction ratio, so they're saying extraction ratio. ratio is equal to arterial plasma PAH 
so let's say arterial plasma PAH minus venous plasma PAH so venous plasma PH this is not the equation that we looked at right this is something we kind of don't know they're giving us the equation divided by arterial plasma PH so a PAH this is just an equation for extraction ratio is near 90% so even they even told us what the value is equal to so this is near 90% okay at an arterial at an arterial concentration lower than 20 milligram per deciliter so they're saying that the extraction ratio of PAH is 90% when the concentration of PAH in the plasma is lower than 20 milligram per deciliter so what's extraction ratio it's kind of the amount um, of uh, pH that we are getting rid of the system see how are they really getting this 90% value let's say in your artery you have you know an approximate value let's say 100 and the, the amount that's going back to the vein let's say it's 10 okay so and the arterial pH is again you have 100 so you're getting up getting 90% so that means only 10 of these are going back to the veins and 100 of these is getting excreted so that's how they came up with the extraction ratio so another thing is they're saying that if the arterial concentration of PAH is 20 milligram per deciliter or less then the extraction ratio is going to be 90% but if that value once a plasma concentration of pH, pH is increased above this level, the extraction ratio decreases progressively. So if this value increases more than 20%, sorry, more than 20 milligram per deciliter, then the pH value drops. Which of the following best explains the observed uh, decrease in pH extraction ratio? I don't have to see the options to know that Remember how we talked about filtration and uh, secretion? Filtration is not carrier mediated, but secretion is. So the secretion, the, the carriers must have been saturated with the amount of pH that's coming in their system. So 20 milligram per, de milligram per deciliter seems like their limit. If it goes above that, then there is overload of work and they cannot get rid of the, all the pH that's in the system. So I would probably looking for an answer which would say, the carriers were saturated. So let's see. A maximal excretion ratio max maximal excretion rate is reached. Hmm, yes, it could be true. The maximum excretion rate is reached, but they did not break it down. But it could be a potential answer. B maximal reabsorption rate is reached. None of the pH reabsorbed. We talked about that. Carrier transport is saturated, that's bingo. That's even better than answer choice A. This is a good example of why we should go through every single answer because there's always, there could be a better answer than we already uh, found one, okay? So that's, that's exactly the one. What about choice C? Filtration fraction is decreased. This question has nothing to do with filtration fraction, so we're going to just ignore it. Renal plasma flow is decreased. No, renal plasma flow is in, in fact increased. It's opposite because our pH is increasing in the artery. Well, yes, I mean the renal plasma flow is decreased, but a decrease in renal plasma flow is not going to decrease our uh, extraction. It's not going to decrease our extraction ratio. The main reason is the carriers. So C is the ideal answer in this particular question.